The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline, so you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. Welcome to Sunday Showcase. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. It's season 13 of the Sonic Summer Stock Playhouse. Performing through the summer months, the Sonic Summer Stock Playhouse is presented by the Sonic Society for the Mutual Audio Network and features producers and actor troops from the modern age of audio drama who recreate and reproduce classic old-time radio plays. The Playhouse endeavors to bring shows to a contemporary audience for the love of the medium and not in any intended form of copyright infringement. And now, we go to our host of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse on stage now, Mr. David Alt. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, once again to the 13th season of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Hello, I am your humble host for this performance, David Ott. This week at the Playhouse, we present another double feature with a brief intermission between the two, beginning with the exciting Western family show Red Rider from Project Audion and Larry Groby. This show was eventually part of the Mutual Broadcasting System, the spiritual father to the now Mutual Audio Network. Our second offering after intermission is a serious tale from Rachel Pulliam and Soul Twin Audio with Ring Once for Death. However, the stage is set for our first feature, and Roaring River Renegades begins right now from Project Audion. Once again, it's time for Project Audion. where voice actors come together via Zoom to present classic radio with a visual twist. Howdy. I'm Larry Groby with the Generic Radio Workshop. I'm just setting up our virtual studio for our new radio recreation, The Adventures of Red Rider. You know the show. Of course you do. It was the... Red was the Western hero that Ralphie so much admired in the movie A Christmas Story. You know how Ralphie wanted a Red Ryder BB gun and all the adults thought he would shoot his eye out? <laughs> well, Red Ryder really was a massively popular character in the 30s and 40s. Comic strips, comic books, uh, two dozen films, and of course, on the radio. Where at one point, Red Ryder had a higher ratings than The Lone Ranger. Now, both shows had strong heroes with resourceful Native American sidekicks, which is, I gotta admit, completely out of date today, but innocently acceptable back in the 1940s. Now, one difference between the two shows is that Red Rider, I think, had a lot more action, more gunfights, more fistfights, and that means more sound effects. In fact, this show requires two sound effects people today, so I want you to meet one of them, my old friend, Ken Rainey. You've been doing this for, gosh, how long, sound effects? Oh, Larry, it's been forever. In fact, like most of my generation and Ralphie's in our current play, I started out by playing cowboys and Indians in my backyard on school grounds, and uh, there were a lot of kerpows and kerchows and kerchangs. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and, of course, you had to have a horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I'm currently doing, however, for the most part, is not vocalizing, though that does come into uh, into practice, is uh, doing sound effects with ordinary, everyday objects. And I got my start doing that with Richard Froelich from Texas Radio Theater Company 20-some-odd years ago. Well, radio needs sound effects like crazy, and this show has a really wide range of effects, eh? 
We got everything oh, in yes. here. Uh, I mean, some of them we can do and we have to do pre-recorded, like you know, like cows are best. Yeah. Right. Cows the studio's are, not big enough for all those cows. For not a not a herd of cattle in the water, <laughs> uh, but but generally sounds are better when they can be done live and and acted. You know. Sometimes that's easy because, uh, you know, the sound is what it sounds like, like, you know, a clatter around a, a breakfast table. You've got some. Yeah, you don't need anything but the real thing for that. Exactly. Um, on the other hand, something like a gunshot. We don't want to use pistols in the studio. So how do you, how might you do a gunshot? Well, the simplest way, like always, is a balloon. Let me challenge you. Little Beaver, the, the, the little junior Indian helper, he has to shoot a flaming arrow. And now arrows are pretty quiet, except, except like gunshots in the movies and on radio. They get a little more zing to them, if you will. They how do, do you, indeed. How are you going to well, do that? With, with that one, I do vocalize the, uh, the flight of the arrow. And then when it hits the wood or the object that it's going to hit, I try to give it a little twang. <laughs> Brilliant. That's and great. And it's just a little dowel rod. It's like a, like an old ruler on a desk, yeah. It exactly like we did when we were kids. <laughs> um, well, that was a that was a flaming arrow I happen to know because I I've read the script. Um, yes. Things have to catch fire. That's another one that's a surprising one how you do that. Oh, they do. And for that simple tissue Okay, well, and, we've and, got... yeah, Go ahead. With, along with the fire, you know, you've got to have that rain in the show, and there's thunder to go along with that as well. Oh, yeah, and that's one of the ones I'm doing, because I've got the big old piece of uh, aluminum uh, sheeting here, and if I just rattle that, it makes it... it. I'll tell you what, the thunder was so convincing the other day that my dog was in the office with me here, and when I did that, he looked up and ran out. All right. Well, we got rain. We got thunder. We got pistols. Oh, we also need horses hooves. And everybody knows how that's done, right? Thank you, Monty Python. <laughs> it's if enough it works for them, us, it works for us. If it's enough to keep us both busy. Well, I think we're just about ready. Uh, so I think we should both saddle up and gallop off now to go meet the vocal cast so that you guys out there can listen to Red Rider. Ready? Let's Ready. roll thunder! Up there, boy! Out there, fella! Roll thunder! The Bakers of the New Langendorf Bread present The Adventures of America's Famous Fighting Cowboy, Red Rider. There's an old saying about spring and a young man's fancy turning to thoughts of love. But in Red Rider's case, spring makes his fancy turn to the open road. But while our story starts peacefully enough, the spring air is soon acrid with gun smoke and I can promise you the next half hour will be full of surprises. Which reminds me, if you haven't tried Langendorf bread, you're in for a pleasant surprise. You'll be surprised to discover what a treat really good bread can be. If you've been getting along with ordinary bread, find out for yourself what a difference top quality ingredients expertly blended and baked can make. You'll taste the difference with your first bite of delicious, oven-fresh Langendorf bread. Only the finest high-protein flour, fresh, sweet shortening, bodybuilding milk solids, and pure sugar are used in Langendorf bread. That's why Langendorf bread tastes so much better, 
and is so good for you. Because it's made right and baked right, Langendorf bread keeps its oven fresh goodness longer. Get a loaf tomorrow. Enjoy vitamin-enriched Langendorf bread with meals and between meals. Remember, Langendorf goodness is guaranteed. Double your money back if you don't agree. It's America's Finest. Certainly Red Rider, like all ranchers, has a full week's work most every week on the Painted Valley Ranch. Yet, with the sniff of spring just around the corner, it's hard for America's famous fighting cowboy not to start roaming, but just a little, with buckskin and faithful little beaver close by his side. Thus, as we join them now, we find them on the trail, high above Roaring River, on the bend that sweeps between Sombrero and Sundown. Well, boys, how do you like it? Lilies to lady fingers, Red. From here, the river looks like a painting in a book. Red, what's that noise? Sounds like the call of a werewolf. <laughs> werewolf? Oh, buckskin. That had nothing to do with departed spirits. That, my lad, was a steamboat whistle. You see it down there? Oh, me see him. Boat just come around the bend. But what's those funny things on side the boat, Red Rider? Look like water wheel? Ah, uh, those are the paddles, little beaver. The paddles that drive the boat. That's why she's called a side wheeler. Side wheeler? <laughs> Is a side wheeler anything like a side winder, Fred? <laughs> what an imagination. Oh, old timer. Although on the Mississippi, you often find sidewinders wearing silk hats and dealing poker with marked decks. Me want to know what make that funny noise. <laughs> that noise that come from... <laughs> Hold it. There's a noise that ought to be familiar to you. Gunshots. Sounds more like home. Uh, where them shots coming from, Rick? Down in that valley. A man and a girl with some cattle. Get a wig on. We're going to investigate. You don't have to tell me. Me no. Get him up, Papoose. Get him on. Get Let's go, Thunder. Let's help that rancher. Roll, Thunder! Side whining, lost some coyotes. Look at them, cutting out half the herd. Dad, give me that six gun and take this Winchester. I just reloaded it. Give me that dead blasted thing. Now, if that maverick on the chestnut will only hold still a second. Con, sorry, I missed again. Dad, look, something's happening. Why, the wrestlers are turning and running. Well, I'll be. Look at that, will you? Couple of punchers and an Indian kid. Between the rustlers and the river, and they're coming, throwing land like a hailstorm. Look at them scatter, will you, Dad? Gosh, that one cowboy certainly can handle a gun. That engine papoose don't do so bad with that little bow and arrow. Come on, Connie. I want to thank that gentleman. Hold it, compadres. Whoa there, thunder. You folks all right? I guess we are. All except for Dad's disposition. Mister, I never saw a more welcome sight than you knocking on that stag. Gosh, you scattered those rustlers like dried leaves in a windstorm. <laughs> By the way, came up in such a hurry, forgot to introduce ourselves. My name's Ryder. This redskin's known as Little Beaver. And the old timer answers to the name of Buckskin Blodgett. I'm Connie Wilson, Mr. Ryder, and this is my dad. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I yeah, suppose nice it's a pleasure. You. I sure owe you a lot, Ryder. You saved me from. I suppose we let the things go for the moment, Mr. Wilson, and see if we can't round up your cattle. 
Another few minutes and they'll have wandered out into the next ten counties. Little Beaver, help Miss Connie onto her horse and let's ride. <laughs> Now, what was that you were saying about the rustlers, Mr. Wilson? Just what I told you, Red. There's a half a dozen crooked no goods and sombrero, I suspect. But suspecting don't prove nothing. Prove? Dad, you know full well who's behind it. Or if he wasn't behind it, he had his finger in it somehow or the other. Who's that, Miss Connie? I know who he's talking about, Red. Jip Hinkle, a cattle broker. We've been selling through him for the last few years until we found that he was practically making his own prices. So this season, we all decided to drive to the railroad, put our beef in the cattle cars, and ship them ourselves. And he's the only man who could really benefit from stopping you? Benefit? It means his entire business. That's a good business for anybody. Good business, but, but not a very healthy one. Is there anybody else you suspect, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, the way I feel now, I suspect everybody. But Jip Hinkle certainly makes more sense than anybody else. Isn't there any other way you can get to market besides driving into Sombrero and shipping from there? I wish there were. There's just that one dinky little railroad line, and that's all. You see, Mr. Ryder, that river practically shuts this valley off from the rest of the world. How far is Sombrero from here? From our ranch? Just seven or eight miles. Why? Well, after a heavy meal like the one you just fixed, Miss Connie, a little exercise might come in handy. So I thought we might sort of ride into Sombrero and back, and if I happen to run into Jip Henkel, well, the time won't be wasted. Believe me. Hey, Jip. Jim! Take it easy, Polly. What's eating on you? Nothing on me, but I got a hunch something will be eating on you, Prada. What are you talking about? Remember I told you about a puncher in a red shirt who run us off just as we was about to grab Wilson's cattle? Yeah? What about well, him? He, he just rode into town, and I heard him down the block asking some of the boys out in front of the Ace of Hearts Cafe where he could find you. Boss... I got an awful feeling we're in for it. I, I seen how he handles a shit shooter. He's handy with his guns, huh? Polly, what do you think would happen if someone kind of stepped on that redhead's toes? And then when he yelled, talk back to him. Uh, well, will you stop with them riddles, boss? Look, you're getting out of here, and when you see him heading this way, you're picking a fight with him. Get that? Well, I get it, but I sure don't like it. Suppose he recognizes me. Suppose he figures Suppose out you shut up and do as you're told. All I want is for that Jasper to start grabbing his gun. That's all. We got a sheriff in this town, and I'm going to have that redhead in trouble. Right up to his gangling neck. That must be Casual Roper's office across the street, Red Rider. I guess it is, son. And look at that hawk-faced maverick just coming out of it. Him look more like a buzzard than like hawk. Well, in a pinch, either one would be bad enough. Well, maybe this pinch is coming sooner than I expect. He's heading right this way. Hey, hey there. watch it. Hey, why don't you look where you're going? Well, I didn't think I had to. You looked as if you saw where you were going. Yeah? You're pretty salty, ain't you? No, not very. Why? What are you trying to do? Make a joke out of this? That ain't funny to me, redhead. Maybe that's because you got your sense of humor recorded in Jip Hinkle's name. Hank? Well, you're on the prod, ain't you? Well, I'll tell you something, mister. We got an answer for troublemakers around this town. If that's true, what are you doing roaming the streets? I show you, you... Go on, show me. But isn't this more like what you mean? I got something else for you, redhead. Right, Wait, what the shit? Hey, 
Oh my goodness. Huh. Uh, see here, here now. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, Sheriff. I saw the whole thing. Well, that's very interesting. What were you doing? Watching with a spyglass? You just came out of that door. That'll be enough out of you, mister. Now, what happened, Hinkle? This redhead knocked this other gent down, and then wasn't satisfied, and tried to blow him full of holes. God first, did he? He most certainly did. Well, you're most certainly a liar. Yeah? Well, I want an apology. Right now. You know how you can get one, don't you? Empty your holster. Why, you... I wanted you to see that, Sheriff. I wanted you to see that, Sheriff. I thought maybe it would convince you if I drew first on that other polecat. He'd be at the undertaking parlors right now. Well, no. Hinkle said he saw you. And I called Hinkle a liar. In fact, I'll increase that bid. I'll make it a dyed-in-the-wool, two-faced liar. And, Sheriff... If you're interested in stopping the rustling south of the river, ask Hinkle some questions. And if you don't get the right answers, you'd better get some additional deputies, because I think this range is going to be blown wide open. Well, Red really rode into trouble when he rode into that town. He'll be lucky to ride out again with a whole skin. And I wonder how he thinks he can prove Hinkle's connection with the rustling. But that's a question that will be answered as our story goes on. Hey, hey, Mr. Gilmore, I got a question I'll bet you can't answer. Well, what's the question, Bobby? How far can you walk on a loaf of bread? Hmm. Give up, do you, huh? Well, yes, I give up. How far can I walk on a loaf of bread? A Langendorf bread, naturally. Oh, sure. A loaf of Langendorf bread will give you enough energy to walk 25 miles. Oh, gosh, that's a lot of mileage and a lot of energy. I'll bet I could walk 25 miles a day easy. Do you eat a loaf of Langendorf bread every day? Just about, I'll bet you. Mom says she never saw anything like the way I go through a loaf of Langendorf bread. Of course, the rest of the family eats lots of Langendorf bread, too. But I eat the most, I bet you. And Mom says I can eat all I want on account of Langendorf bread is so good for me. You bet it is, Bobby. And all those extra fine ingredients that give Langendorf bread that good flavor you like so well help to build strong, healthy bodies. Enjoy it toasted for breakfast. Put Langendorf bread on the table at every meal. And try making lunchbox sandwiches with Langendorf bread. They stay freshly delicious longer. Get a loaf of fresh, flavorful Langendorf bread tomorrow. Double your money back if you don't agree. It's America's Finest. <laughs> And now, back to Roaring River Renegades, our rootin' tootin' Red Riders story. Following Roaring River, Red, Buckskin, and Little Beaver have ridden into Sombrero on the tail of a cyclone, a cyclone of flying fists, sizzling lead, and choking gun smoke. As we rejoin them now, we find them on the porch of Wilson's Tumbling Dumby Ranch. Roger Wilson is doubled up in laughter. <laughs> oh, doggone it, Red. I'd have give a thousand dollars to have seen you take care of Jip and that gun toting poke out of his. <laughs> Red, what do you think we ought to do? Try to drive to the railhead again? Ah, uh, yes, Carney, but not alone. Why can't half a dozen of you ranchers band together and make a big drive? That way, if those murdering mavericks did come after you again, you'd at least be able to give them a run for their money. What do you think, Dad? Would it be possible to have Shaw, the freight agent for the railroad, get enough cars to carry that much cattle at one time? Yeah, there's only one way to find out. Ask him. I think that's a doggone good idea, Red. If they want to gang up on us, we'll just gang up on them. You bet them. If they try something, we shoot them up plenty of arrows. <laughs> that's the spirit, little beaver. Never let them say they can keep a good man down. Well, how about it? Either one of you like to ride into Sombrero with me again and talk to the freight agent? We'll get the horses ready. 
But I got a feeling in my bones we're still a long way from selling your cattle and having the money in the bank. Over this way, Red. There's a hitch rack right behind the freight depot. Whoa, thunder. Oh, there he is, just coming out of the office. Oh, Mr. Shaw! Mr. Shaw! Well, howdy, Miss Connie. Thought you and your pa were going to ship your yet cattle yesterday. We were, but that's a long story. What I wanted to find out from you is, could you get enough cars ready this week to handle 20,000 head if several of us decided to ship together? Reckon I could, miss. Railroad business has been pretty slow lately. Well, that's fine. If we drive into Sombrero tomorrow night, will you have enough cars by then to accommodate us? That's something I can't say, mister, but if we haven't got enough cars then, there's plenty of room in the holding pins till we get here, so come ahead. Oh, thanks, Shaw. If everything goes all right, you can be expecting us by this time tomorrow. Pick it up, Buckskin. Come on, it's almost sun up now and you're still eating breakfast. Glory time. Hurry up. Hurry up. Not my fault. Miss Connie's a good cook. <laughs> the cows can wait. Hey, never mind that back talk. There are 20,000 head of cattle and 50 men waiting just for you. Now let those griddle cakes go and come on. Red, hear that? This is no day to have a cattle drive. Thunder or not, if we're going to have this drive at all, we got to do it fast. Otherwise, Jip Hinkle will have time to reorganize his plans to offset ours. We don't care. We don't like them. Indians always learn thunder is voice of war god. You die from now, you'll catch plenty trouble. If hmm. you don't stop stuffing hotcakes into your mouth, you little pessimist, you'll <laughs> feel like you've been hit with hotcakes all over. Now, come on now. Trouble or no trouble... We're getting those cattle through. Buckskin, get off there to the right and tell those punches to start knocking on that herd. Ah, ah, get up, you lazy cattle. Get! How do you like our weather, Red? Oh, it's great weather for ducks or rustlers. What do you mean, for rustlers? Well, you're a fine one to ask that. With this mud underfoot, we'd have to swim after them. Well, keep your poncho on, Red, and your fingers crossed. We're not over four miles from Sombrero now. Well, maybe so, but if this rain keeps up, this valley will be just another channel in the Roaring River. All right, Thunder, move! Roll, Thunder! <laughs> Jeepers, boss. We well, cut out that pacing. You're acting like a catamount in a cage. What of it? That's just the way I feel. With everybody set to beat Ryder and them cattlemen to the punches, it's got to come up a storm. Well, you'd better think of something, because once they get them into those railroad cars... Wait a minute. They'll... Have all those cars come in yet? Well, I think so, boss. And once that train pulls out, you'll be out, too. Out of business. Well, you think so? Well, I won't be if you do as you're told. Do what, as I'm told? You know where that little railroad switching station is, about 16 miles down the track from sundown? Yeah, but what? Maybe it's... this rainstorm was a blessing in disguise. Go get your horse and two of your boys and bring plenty of lead with you. You're going to make those ranchers wish they'd never been born. <laughs> All right, brother, start reaching. What the? If you're trying to stick me up, this ain't no regular railroad office. 
This is just a dispatcher's telegraph office. Never mind the explanations and sit right where you are. You're doing as you're told. What? Why, you side wide and ugly faced. Ugh. All right, boys. Yeah, pick him up and put him back in his chair. And when he wakes up, he'll do what we tell him to. Well, Red, I guess we owe you a big vote of thanks. I never thought when we started this morning we'd get all the cattle through. To tell you the truth, Wilson, neither did I. And neither did Little Beaver. Did you, Little Beaver? When we heard thunderstorm, we never think them get through so easy. Well, that just goes to prove, Little Beaver, that the things people have to fear most is what they fear. Wilson, Ryder, hold it. Stop those men from loading the cattle. Stop them? Why, Shaw? What's the matter? Here, look for yourself. A telegram came in just from our switching station down the line. The storm washed out our rails between Big Rock and Sundown. Wash out? Well, what the dickens are we gonna do now? You see, no last now at what thunder we. Oh, just a minute, Shaw. How long will it take for the rails to be repaired? Your guess is as good as mine, Ryder, but I'd say not over a day, day and a half. Well then, why can't we just leave the cattle here in the holding pens until the road's repaired and we're ready to ship? I'll stay here and guard the cattle, and if anyone tries to rustle them, it'll be over my dead body. Yeah, that's mighty nice of you, Red, but, well, I sort of wonder about leaving my cattle here. Well, suit yourself, but if you keep driving them back and forth, you won't have any beef left on them. Red's right, Dad, and if he'll stay here and keep an eye on them, I'm sure nothing's gonna happen. Oh, sure. Nothing's gonna happen at all. Nothing but plenty of red-hot trouble. Maybe Buckskin's right, but we'll soon find out. Red and the others will be back for the smashing climax of our story in just a moment. First, just a word with you people who are always in a hurry. Being busy is no excuse for skipping meals, especially breakfast. In fact, just because you are busy and always rushing is all the more reason why you should eat a good breakfast. Experts tell us that breakfast is the meal most important to us. So why not make it a good breakfast with lots of delicious energy-building toast made of Langendorf bread? Langendorf bread with its fresh, full-bodied goodness makes the most tempting toast that ever waked up a sleepy appetite. Golden brown, piping hot, and fragrant. Mmm, mmm. Tomorrow morning, treat your family to tasty, toasted Langendorf bread. You'll be giving them a good start for a good day because every flavorful slice of Langendorf bread gives you lasting energy quickly. Get a loaf tomorrow. Double your money back if you don't agree. Langendorf bread is America's finest. <laughs> Now, to find out if Buckskin's prophecy of trouble, red hot trouble, comes true. Rejoining Red, we find that it's night, and Red, Buckskin, and Little Beaver, all three, are in the railroad holding pens, guarding the cattle. Not ten yards away, Chip Hinkle and his gang are slowly creeping up on the unsuspecting watchman. There's the redhead pulley. Yeah, got his back toward us now. And the old man and the engine kid's fast asleep. Take it easy. Let's get right behind them before we jump them. Okay, now! Are oh, you double-crossing, sneaky... Pulley! Let, let him have it! 
Now, you tie him up, Polly. Tie him up good. Now, the rest of you get started on the cattle. <laughs> this is gonna be like taking all day suckers from little babies. Oh, if you'd only listen. Now don't go yelling at us ranchers, Red. We got plenty of reason to be sore at you. Um, you were going to guard the cattle with your life. And what do you think I did with your beef? Barbecue it and ate it all up? Well, now, being sarcastic <laughs> ain't going to help, Red. And you might as well know the truth. Since we found that telegraph was a phony and there weren't no washout... Some of the ranchers around sundown are sure you had something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we all do. Doggone it, you can't make all that cattle vanish like... Hold on. What's the matter with all of us? I'll bet that's what happened to the cattle. What? What are you talking about? Well, with all the mud on the riverbanks from yesterday's rain, you could drive a hundred thousand head of cattle down there at night, and no one would have heard it. And now, with the sun out, the hoof prints would have been dried up. Now, what's the river got to do with the cattle disappearing? Well, how else could they have gotten out of here without leaving a trail if they weren't taken on a boat? All right, man, all right. Now, you're blaming me for this, so how about giving me a chance, with Little Beaver's help, to prove that you're wrong? Now, get those horses, and let's roll! <laughs> Enjoying your boat ride. Uh, I'd enjoy it a lot more if I didn't have a lot of cattle for my fellow passengers. Well, in another couple of hours, when we get the money for him, you'll be able to afford the presidential suite at the best hotel in town. <laughs> uh, we certainly put it over on that redhead and his friends, didn't we? <laughs> yep. And didn't even leave a trace behind. Whoa, what the dickens? Holy, look! They're on the shore! Jim! It's Am Rangers. Hey, Jeff, what are we gonna do? Hey, Cap, get this barge out in the middle of the river and open her up! Shh! Jeff! Oh, suffering cats, did you see what they're up to? Besides throwing lead, they got that little engine kid shooting flaming arrows. Oh, and one of them arrows just landed in that bale of feed. It's caught fire! One of those dirty. Captain, I don't care if the borders do blow up! Show us some speed! Come on, Thunder, keep on swimming. How are you doing, little beaver? Time to swim like champion. He shot those flaming arrows like a little champion. Look at that hay burn. Easy now, boys. We gotta catch those ropes that are hanging over the stern and get up on board. I'm a watching, Red. Okay. Then grab hold and pull. Hold me up now, Red Rider. Watch it. We're almost up to the deck. Now! Uh, Jeff, look out. It's that redhead. He's gotten on board. Why, that interference! Don't try to pick up that gun. Duck, Buckskin! And now, Mr. Cattle Broker, we'll just show you what it feels like to be really broken. Broken in two. Red! You knocked the sidewinder overboard. Never mind him, old timer. He's so full of hot air anyhow, he'll float for hours. What we gotta do now is run this boat into the nearest bank and get off these cattle. Once we get them in their pens, we'll have a couple of nice stone pens for these other cattle we just caught. <laughs> Well, Red, any 
Anytime you want a job, boss, in my ranch, just say the word. Don't be silly, father. Why, a man who can sail a riverboat the way they read did the one with the cattle can be an admiral in the Navy. Well, I guess you mean the horse marines, Miss Connie. Anyhow, if there are any medals being handed out, little beaver sure ought to get one for marksmanship with that bow and arrow. Me don't want medals, Red Rider. Me just happy to find chance one time to help a mule. That's what I like to hear, a modest digger boy. And just for that, when we get back home, I'm personally gonna buy you a whole lot of new arrows. Well, we'll never get home standing around here. So long, folks. Goodbye. Get him, get him up, Papoose. Get along. Thank you. Ah, back to the Painted Valley, Scissor Bear. <laughs> I'll after him, Thunder. Let's go. Listen again next Thursday and every Tuesday and Thursday evening for another adventure of the Wild West that lives forever. Starring America's famous fighting cowboy, Red Ryder. Adventures of Red Ryder are brought to you twice each week by the bakers of the new Langendorf bread. Guaranteed America's finest. Red Rider is played by Brooke Temple. Now, till Thursday evening, this is Art Gilmore saying good night. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. That's our Project Audion episode for this time. Hey, do us a favor. If you enjoyed this show, then click a button to like it. Or comment on it. Or share the link with your friends. We're not looking for money, but we do need you to show your support. So until next time, thanks for listening. Can we get through page two, three, and four real quick? Sure. sure. I can do it. I can do it. Stay all night. Do you want it with the Romanian accent this time? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one long shot left. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's door, fine. Right? Let's see. Where do you want to use it then? Okay. Where, uh, you only need two at the beginning, so let me just do... You do one shot, I'll do the shot ricochet, okay? Thanks so very much to the Project Audion Troop and Larry Groby for this exciting western tale of The Red Rider. We will now take a short break before our second feature from Soul Twin Audio. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen, the demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality, to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural, worlds of dark satire, worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm-hmm.